are some of the thousands of books of Philip Biss, and we can tell that they're all Biss's books because of this rather dark, almost black binding that they all have. We can also tell they're Biss's books by taking one out of the shelf, opening it, and they all have a presentation label, a printed presentation label, that says that this is the book of Wadham College, Oxford, from the gift of Dr. Philip Biss. We can also tell that these are Biss's books because they all bear their titles not on their spines like modern books, but on their fore edges. And this shows us that books in this period were often shelved with their fore edge out and not with their spine. If I pick up another book, we can see that they all have their titles on the fore edge. You can tell, however, that many of these books were bound for this, and some of them perhaps a little later from college in Oxford. And you can tell that because a book bound in Oxford in this period very frequently has hatching at the bottom and at the top of the binding. And that is how we can tell that it is an Oxford binding. These books all now have titles on their spines, like modern books. But we can tell that this is actually all a later edition, maybe in the 18th or 19th centuries. There's another thing about these books, though, is that if I pick them up almost at random, I will find that every single one has two marks at the top here. Take the next one, two marks at the top. And that is where they were chained, because all books in college libraries were chained to their desks so that they couldn't be stolen. Okay, we've come out of the stack, um, and I'm going to show you a few books from the library. Um, but first of all, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of the library, um, and why there is such a fine library in Wadham. Well, when you start a college, you need four things. You need people, you need money, you need buildings, and you need books. Wadham was very lucky when it was founded in 1610, because the founders had managed to persuade one man to give his entire library to the college, all in one. And this was a man called Philip Biss, who was a rich archdeacon, he was the archdeacon of Taunton, and he published nothing, he's not particularly well known to historians, but what he did do was he spent all his money on books, on thousands of books, and we've seen some of them um, in the stacks. He had maybe two, three thousand books, and they all came to Wadham by deed of gift in his lifetime, when the college was founded and before it was even built. So when Wadham started properly as a college, it had been kick-started by having been given one of the largest libraries in the country. Um, a library of two and a half, three thousand books at the time, particularly of the kind of books that Biss had, meant that this was really in the top handful of libraries in the country. And this brand new college, founded in 1610, suddenly had at, at its heart um, one of the most impressive English libraries. So I'm going to show you um, another uh, early book from the college um, that came in after Biss's library. Biss's library started a trend of giving books to the college and that was the way in which most college libraries in the period grow. Colleges don't tend to buy books, they ask members to give them. The statutes of Wadham were quite careful about how one was to give books and indeed how one was to behave in the library. Only graduates were allowed in the library. That's very common in Oxford libraries. Undergraduates aren't really allowed in until really the 19th or even 20th centuries. So it's really a private library for fellows who are studying for postgraduate degrees. The fellows tended to give books to the library. Um, they were clearly quite proud of their library. The rules were strict. Um, they all had a key. Um, there were hefty fines for letting anyone else in who wasn't part of the graduate fellowship of the college, about six and a half shillings, I think, you know, it's a big sum of money. And when books were given to the library by the fellows, they wrote their name in them and the date in which they gave the book. That means that almost all of Wadham's early books have the name of the donor and the date of presentation inside the book, and that can tell us, when we put all the information together, the vertical history of the library, how it grew over time. And that's very rare in Oxford collections to be able to be so precise about how a library grew. So one of the earliest people to give a book to the library was the donor of this book here, which is a 
long textbook in law, which is common for the period. And the donor of this book was a man called Thomas Harris. And we know that because, as the rules say, his name is written in the front, but also because the college had printed a small label, which is set in the front of this book, that says in Latin, this is the book of Wadham College from the gift of Thomas Harris, um, fellow of this college elected at its first foundation. So this little printed label here is one of the earliest pieces of evidence about the growth of this library. What's particularly interesting about this man, which is why I wanted to show it to you, is that he died almost immediately upon the opening of the college, and he was one of the earliest people to be commemorated in the chapel. And it is the monument in Wadham College Chapel that is made out of books. So you have a monument in the chapel made out of books, and this is one of the books um, of the man to whom that monument was raised. Once again, if we look at this book, we can notice that the title on the spine is actually a modern title. And if we turn it round again, on the foredge, we see the older title. that shows that this man also kept his books with the foredge out. And indeed, if you go to the chapel and you look at his monument, you'll see that all the books on his monument are stacked with their foredges out. The most famous Warden of Wadham College to date must be John Wilkins, uh, the mid-17th century warden, who was thrust upon the college, uh, actually, by uh, the parliamentarian regime. Uh, he became warden in 1648. Um, the college actually very much liked him, uh, and he had a very successful decade at Wadham, uh, where he held the college and indeed a lot of Oxford together politically during the interregnum. He's most associated with the scientific revolution. This is the man who is effectively uh, the main founder of the Royal Society of London, and historians of science like to celebrate the contribution of Wadham College to that process. Um, Warden Wilkins had a scientific club that he ran in the lodgings, and that club had amongst its members the young Christopher Wren, the young Robert Hooke, Robert Boyle from London, all the great names of the scientific revolution. And that's what Wilkins is known for. What is perhaps less obvious is that Wilkins also took an interest in the library of his college, and he made sure that he too gave the library books. This happened probably in round about 1656, and he gave maybe 20 books, some very small, some extremely big, some state-of-the-art atlases came from Wilkins, as well as some very small pieces of local printing that I'll show you. So I'm going to show you four books that Wilkins gave, because they illuminate different aspects of Wilkins' interests and his achievement. Um, people like to talk about Wilkins and science as if there was really nothing else important. So I will do that. I'll show you two important books that Wilkins gave the college. The first book I'm going to show you is a book written by the famous physician William Harvey. Um, William Harvey wrote a book um, on the generation of eggs, very important text in, um, in the history of that part of science. Um, and his De Generatione Animalium on generation of animals is one of the books that Wilkins gave. And we can see in his books that there is an inscription saying that this is the book of Wadham College from the gift of that distinguished man John Wilkins, um, Doctor of Theology um, and Warden of this college, Guardianus, the Guardian, that is his title. The other book he gave of the scientific variety that I'm showing you is by the courtier Sir Kenan Digby, who was a very popular writer at the time, who wrote a book called um, The Nature of Bodies, uh, and then another book on the nature of man's soul, and he coupled these two books together, um, a book on the body and a book on the soul. And this was regarded as perfectly legitimate part of science as it was practiced in the period. These are the books that we would associate with Wilkins of popular imagination, Wilkins the scientist. But he was, as the inscription shows, a theologian as well. He was a man um, who took biblical criticism very seriously. Um, and actually half of the books he gave are really theological um, in their orientation. And I'm going to show you two of those. The first is a book by John Lightfoot. He was the greatest scholar of Hebrew in the period in this country. Uh, he was based in Cambridge, 
um, and one of his famous sets of books was A Harmony of the Gospels. He wrote a book explaining how all the Gospels fit together, and his particular interest is in uh, Jewish customs that can be seen in the New Testament. And he produced these books in English um, so that, effectively, students could understand their Bible in a very historically precise and informed way. And this was really um, state-of-the-art um, biblical criticism. And Wilkins is keen to make sure that his college library is stocked with these kind of books. But the last one I'll show you is a very small book. And this is a book by a man called um, Henry Wilkinson. He was known as Dean Harry around Oxford. And he was the head of house at um, a hall called Magdalen Hall, um, which is now on the site of Magdalen College. And Wilkins himself had been a student. And this little book here is three little academic sermons um, that Wilkinson had given. Um, and Wilkins gave a little copy of this book to his library in Wadham here, um, perhaps as a sign of supporting local intellectual work, I suppose. But there's another reason why Wilkinson is interesting as well, is that Wilkinson too was very keen on libraries. And in fact, in 1661, he publishes the first library catalogue of an Oxford library. And it's his own library. He donates his entire library to his college and then publishes a catalogue of it um, in order to encourage other people to give donations. So in fact, what's happening in Wadham is really happening in a lot of colleges in this period. They are trying to kickstart uh, the college libraries by basing them around large collections which are given um, by the local well-to-do academics. The last book I'm going to show you is one of the most interesting books, I think, in the library. Um, this book is called the Bibliotheca Classica, and it is a bibliography, it's a list of printed books, and it was written by a Lutheran clergyman called Draudius, um, and this book lists basically all the books that were known uh, to have been published in the learned disciplines at the time. It's published in 1625, and it's really um, a handbook for people who are going to the Frankfurt Annual Book Auction, the book market. Um, and in Frankfurt you can buy all sorts of books, and this is going to be your handbook of really uh, what you could go out and buy, a kind of shopping list for scholars. And the reason why it was bought by this college is presumably because it could teach young scholars exactly what had been written on any given subject. But that's not why the, this particular book is interesting. This copy is interesting, first of all, because of how it first arrived here. If we look at the presentation inscription, it says, this is the book of Wadham College from the gift of that distinguished lady, Mistress Mariah Dimmock. Now, Mariah Dimmock can't have been a fellow of the college, but in fact she was a woman who gave the college a large sum of money in round about 1625, and one of the things they did with it was that they bought this book. So it's a very interesting example of an early uh, donation that came from money given by a woman. As we go through the book, what we can see is that it lists uh, lots of books that are in print. But there's something else peculiar about this book, which we can see if we turn back to this title page. But facing this printed title page, there is a manuscript title page, um, and this says that the book is the Bibliotheca Realis et Classica, um, and it is signed by a man called P.S., and it is dated to 1687. Now what's happened here is that this man, P.S., who we know to have been a fellow called Philip Stubbs, picked up this book in the 1680s. It had been sitting in the college, obviously, since round about 1625. And he took it apart, and he put a blank piece of paper between every single leaf. And he then repurposed the entire work as a library catalogue for Wadham. And we can see that he subtitles it the Bibliotheca Bissiana, the Biss Library. In other words, this book is now the record of all the books as they stood in Wadham College in 1680. And what he did was he went along the shelves, and if Wadham had a book, he wrote the shelf mark next to the printed entry. And if Wadham didn't, or if the printed book didn't have the book that Wadham had, he wrote that down on a fresh interleaf. And we can see, therefore, all these new books that have been written here, and then these shelf marks of the books that are already in the library. So this is a wonderful example of a book that has had two quite distinct uses. The first use was to teach students um, what it was that they should be reading on any given subject. And the second use 
um, in the late 1680s was as a catalogue of what books the college held at that time. And so it really is one of the most valuable early records we have of modern college library.